Dave Palumbo here for Muscle Serpents Daily. And guys, this is the aftermath of Hurricane Ian. Devastation on my property here. The house is still intact, luckily. My pool cage was mangled. It wasn't pretty, that's for sure. It was a scary storm, but we emerged. We're cleaning up now. And uh, luckily we got no water damage like I did 10 years ago in Hurricane Sandy in New York. So that was a good thing. I am gonna go into the snake room. I'm gonna take a look and I gotta feed and uh, give some uh, water to the uh, albino uh, water monitors. I'm gonna take a look and make sure uh, no eggs are on the ground or boa litters, you never know. I know we're kind of done with the season, but we're gonna check that anyway. And I'm gonna do a little bit of cleaning because uh, Pablo won't be here till tomorrow, probably. I hope he comes tomorrow. So maybe we'll, uh, I'll showcase a few animals as I'm cleaning. I think that's gonna be the funnest thing to do. I don't wanna kind of miss today, but hey, it is crazy here today. And uh, like I said, trees down everywhere all my fruit trees and fun stuff but we're all alive we're all safe we're all healthy and that's what it's all about let's take a look and go into the snake room the cleanup begins we got everyone going all the kids we got even grandma working hi you're on the wrong side of the camera logan hi there's logan i'm doing raking he's raking ari's driving around the crazy cart go kart Tyler, my video guy, and his girlfriend are here. They stayed at the uh, at the building Tyler? upstairs. And they didn't stay with the snakes. Well, actually, they did stay with the snakes when it got really hairy because they were afraid they were going to get uh, the roof was going to collapse. Which thank God it didn't. <laughs> so they they were downstairs with the olive pythons, and all my fruit trees got knocked down. It's, uh, it's not fun. Not fun. But you know what? No one got hurt. I, you can hear my generators buzzing in the background there, and. Hopefully the electricity will turn on before I run out of propane in the ground. So that's where we stand. Clean up for Ian, Hurricane Ian 2022, taking place. All right, update time. This is what happens when you have hurricanes. You gotta do updates. IMG Motley, Hypo, 100% head sharp albino, 66% head anery. We basically have a hypo motley here that's uh, IMG, increasing melanistic gene. And she's 100% head sharp albino. She's looking really beautiful. She's, I don't know if she's gonna get much darker than this. She might get a little darker. This IMG gene cannot exert itself completely, even though there's the motley gene in there, because of the fact that the hypo gene is in there. It's amazing what one copy of a hypo gene will do, but it will stop at least 50% of the melanin production from the IMG gene, that's for sure. We have a nice striped tail. She's really nice. I was, I w I was gonna, you know, she is for sale, but I might actually wind up keeping her now because she's looking so beautiful. But, she didn't like the camera. She's a 21, she's a year and a half old actually because she's she was born in April of 21. So she's she's got, she's put some good size in her. She's, halfway there to breeding so this would be a great pickup for someone really nice snake here's a female that i was selling that i pulled off the uh, sale rack and i kept her jungle motley hypo 100 percent het vpit positive and anery one she was just so beautiful i couldn't sell her she's so clean looking gorgeous gorgeous snake for just being hypo jungle and motley i really think that the, the when these snakes have that vpi gene that they're carrying one copy of they absolutely show something different cleaner much cleaner lighter looks to them i think it enhances the hypo gene and when you have one copy of vpit positive i don't care what anyone says i know it's recessive but i see it this snake is really really light now this does come from the frank martin white walker line so they're a little lighter anyway but telling you this snake is spectacular and i have a couple more like her that are for sale i just happened to pull her out because she was just looking too good funny someone was just asking me about an onyx boa earlier today uh, this one is not for sale this is my male that i've been growing up since 21 she's he's a year and a half old it's my hypo blood onyx that's possibly head for honduran t positive really red still holding a lot of red onyx is red blood is red 
put the hypo gene in there for one copy, you're gonna get a red snake. Put two copies of hypo, you're gonna get a really, really red snake. Throw Honduran T-positive in there if we ever hit on that too. That will give you even a redder snake. So this little boy is staying here. He's looking good. He really is. And you know what? His belly actually is, is really where you can see the, the red. The real. He's much more impressive from, from beneath than from on top. On top, he's got more pigment, like more dark. Underneath, you see how the, that hypo gene is interacting with that onyx gene and that blood gene. Beautiful, beautiful male. There's my beautiful Sun Glow Sterling that I produced in 2021. She's also a year and a half old. This is like the grow up rack. They're not quite ready for V70s, but they're in V35s. She's got some really, really nice coloring on her. Sterling obviously is that is the recessive trait that removes pattern. Sun Glow is obviously a hypo albino. This is a cow line albino. Really, really one of the nicest albino Sterlings I've seen or Sun Glow Sterlings I've seen. Nice white eye and the, uh, the hypo gene. Look at that, beautiful. The great thing is if you guys are interested, I have two more females for sale too. This one is staying with me, but I have two females that I'm selling to. All right, here's uh, one of the uh, females I have for sale. This is probably an albino sterling. I don't think it's sun glow. I don't think there's, I don't think the hypo gene's in here because the eye looks a little red to me, but she's beautiful too. Eating well, I mean, solid, solid snake. Sterlings are just great eaters, great breeders, I find. And the albinos are you no know, different. Albinos are really good eaters and good breeders too, so it's a good combination together. And she's ready to go. She's a year and a half old. And here's the other one that I have for sale. Actually, this one's really nice. This, I think this is Sun Glow Sterling. Got the white eye. And she's really, really pretty. Look at that striped tail. Pink's in it. She's beautiful. Wow. Did these guys turn out well. I'm so happy I, I didn't sell them right away. Kind of I didn't even list them until recently. So if anyone is interested, let me know. There are two of these available. I'm keeping one. Uh, I have a um, I have a female also who's a, an albino, so I wanted to get a sun glow because my male is a sun glow sterling. So. Look at those purples in the tail. That's a really nice tail, I gotta tell you. Here's one of my beautiful Hyposcoria head VPIT positives, and this is perfect um, evidence for what I was saying earlier today about when you have the VPIT positive gene, that T positive albino, in the head form, it just changes color. Look at this guy, I mean, or this girl, I should say. She is just one of the nicest, cleanest scorias I've ever seen. And it's not because this, she has the hypo gene only. I mean, hypo doesn't clean it up that much. The, VPIT positive lightens it. She almost has like a salmon color to her. It was even more apparent when she was younger, but she's just absolutely beautiful. She almost looks T positive right now. I mean, beautiful, beautiful snake. And I'm telling you that VPIT positive gene, it definitely changes the way things look in its head form. Obviously in the visual form, it's gonna change things, but it does it in the head form too. It definitely lightens these snakes up. This is one of the nicest, nicest uh, snakes I have in my collection. Beautiful blue eye too. She's still here. She was almost sold and then I made another deal with the person and they took a different snake, but this is my <laughs> Eclipse head albino. It's a leopard, motley, which gives you that patternless snake that's like a chocolate black color. She is two years old, over two years old, two and, two and a half years old now. She'll probably definitely breed by this time next year if people start, you know, feeding her a little heavier. She's going to have her age on her, you know, or maybe even the following year, depending on how long you like to wait. She's head for call albino. She is gorgeous. I, look, if I wait, if it, if it goes any longer, I'll just keep her. She is beautiful, beautiful snake. All right, I had to show you this beauty as I'm cleaning. Hypo, Motley. Sharp albino, head RDR black eyed anery, so head for that black eyed anery gene that removes yellows and reds. She's probably one of the nicer albinos I've seen. She really is a nice motley sun glow. Look, look at those pinks in there. What a beautiful, beautiful snake. 
produced her a couple a year and a half ago. She's staying here. And I'm very happy with her. She's turning out great. Just moved her up to a slightly bigger container. She was in the hatchling recently, but obviously she's too big for that now. So moving on up. All right. Hypo, leopard, mandarin belly, head call albino. So we got the beautiful, first of all, leopard, hypo leopard's are beautiful anyway. Throw a mandarin belly in there. Get a nice little red belly and get some more red into the snake. Look at that. And then of course, this is head albino. This will be a really nice future breeding female down the road. She's obviously got some time to go. She's only a year old, a year and a half old. She's gonna need another probably two years, two and a half years, so, but we'll see. It's growing her slow. All right, now I wanted to show you her because you guys have seen Scorias. This is not a hypo Scoria. This is just a regular Scoria, but if you can see, it's like really clean looking. Look how clean that is. She's definitely going after me. She definitely wants that camera. Let's, let's kind of desensitize her a little bit. The reason she's so clean is she is het VPIT positive. You'll never see a normal Scoria that looks this clean. It almost looks like it's a hypo, but you can tell the black and the tail there's no hypo in there. It's just very, very light and clean, and that's the influence of that head VPIT positive gene. Look at that blue eye too. And I've told you that before. I showed it to you before, but the, the, the females I showed you before was that she was hypo scoria head VPI. So maybe you didn't believe me, and so I wanted to show you I have a female that doesn't have the hypo gene, but that's head VPI and also has that beautiful, beautiful, nice clean look. And I'm telling you, these are gonna when we hit the VPIT positive scoria, we're going to hit, hit some really, really beautiful, clean animals. Another beauty I produced a year and a half ago, Aztec Sun Glow, Sharp Sun Glow that is. So Aztec, Hypo, Sharp Albino, Motley, Head Black Eyed Anery. You can see that little squared off saddles, that's the Aztec. See, obviously, the sun glow is pretty obvious. Look at that tail. Look at that beautiful that tail is. Woof! Motley and the uh, Aztec really have a nice interaction with each other. And she's 100% head for black eyed anery. So, can't go wrong with this, this, this little girl. She's looking beautiful. She's putting on size, growing her up nice and slow. Can't wait to see her breed at some point. <laughs> Someone has asked me, did you breed any Bradley pythons this year? I don't think they went this year. That's my male, my hypo male. And my female, I don't know, she is kind of sitting on the hot spot. But she was kind of, she's been eating, you know. I don't know. I don't think she's gonna go. They're spring breeders, which means they breed in the spring and then they usually produce in the summer. We're at the end of the summer already. She she produced for me uh, last year and she went a lot earlier. So I, I don't think she's gonna go, to be honest with you. There she is. She's a stone wash. So she's a stone wash, which is a recessive trait. And he's a hypo. He's a, a double copy hypo. We're not really sure if the hypo is a incomplete dominant or a line bred trait, but he's a beautiful hypo. When I got him, it was super red. He's in the shed now, actually. But, uh, so I don't know. I don't think the Bradley's going to go this year. Maybe she took the year off. I did introduce him a little on the later side. I don't know. I didn't, I didn't cool this, this room as much either. I was like, my air conditioning build the year before was crazy and I didn't even get any action from the all python. So I said, I'm not wasting my money. I kind of did some feeding manipulations instead. So we'll see. I, I was, I'm not heartbroken. You know, it didn't, didn't really matter. I actually was actually trying to do some other breedings with this female also early in the year, but then I wound up putting him in and I might've waited too long, but it was springtime. So I don't know, we'll see. I do love my Bradleys, but I'm, I'm, like I said, it's, it's not going to break my heart if they don't if they don't breed right away. I'm not, that's not one of my major, you know, must-have projects at this point. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today here at Palumbo's Pythons and Boas. In the aftermath of Hurricane Ian, I never like to miss. I don't want you guys to go without a video for a single day. So I went into the snake room and uh, showed you some cool stuff and. Uh, 
tomorrow actually we have some we have some eggs hatching actually i saw in the incubator there wasn't they were kind of just sticking their heads out so i didn't want to kind of showcase any of those because there, there was really nothing to really it was a lot of guesswork so tomorrow if a couple snakes come out i'll show you those clutches that are hatching there's some really cool ones too so you never know what we might see uh, that's fun that's at least something to be uh to think about if pablo's here tomorrow uh maybe we could do some other cool stuff too uh in the aftermath of this hurricane and uh Thank God I didn't have my outdoor door enclosure set up. I would have had to like, I don't even know what I would have done with them. They definitely want to fit inside. I would have had to like lay them in the grass or something like that. So that's the only bad thing about having outdoor stuff in Florida. During hurricanes, you got to really figure out where to put them because you don't want them blowing into anything. And then of course, you know, you got to bring the animals in too. So that wouldn't have been a problem. I could have bagged them up, but uh, that's how it goes. It was funny because I was supposed to get an inspection from Florida Fish and Wildlife. They were supposed to come and do my inspection for my, um, for my, uh, prohibited species that I have, my Burmese pythons and anacondas. And um, the inspector, you know, obviously we had an appointment Wednesday, of course, of all days, the day of the hurricane. So she'll probably have to come out next week and do that. So, but it's all good. Uh, I'll show you some footage of uh, the hurricane uh, as we're kind of wrapping things up here, just so you guys can see how crazy it really was. All right, as you can see, uh, round two of Hurricane Ian here is really taken out a beating on my pool cage, took the screens off. The actual door is in my pool. And one of the posts is on the ground there. I'm trying to film through the window here because it's so crazy out there. This is way worse than it was before. Um, it's like, I don't even have a pool cage anymore. It's completely blown this open. The other door over there is, is being blown open. We can't keep it, seem to keep it closed. And I, we don't really want to go outside to even try to test it out at this point. It's really, really crazy outside right now. The, this is probably the worst I've seen so far. This this looks like a, hear that? Wow. These are big, big winds. These gotta be 140 mile per hour winds at least when they're gusting. Absolutely insane. I thought we were done. We're not done. All right, guys, uh, you know what to do. Hit that subscribe button, turn on your notifications, hit that like button. I'll see you back tomorrow morning.